In this video, we ask, has our copper coat failed? In October 2014, we sold one of Arteo, our Bavaria 32. We'd had her since 2005 and she was only three years old, nearly four years old when we got her. We loved that boat. We'd covered nearly 10,000 miles in her, sailing along the south coast of England, across to France, up to Belgium and down to the Scillies. But it was time to get something bigger. We spent quite some time looking at new boats and eventually we decided on a Bavaria 37, owner's version, which is the far designed hull. They're quick, strong, stiff and go exceedingly well for their size. They're also big enough to live aboard. So we placed an order. Having used Coppercoat before on a couple of our other boats, we decided that we were going to have Impavidus Coppercoated from new. And this was placed as part of the order with Clipper Marine in Swanwick, south of England. Clipper Marine subcontracted the work to a company called Osmotech, who are also on the handle, and they started to prepare the newly delivered boat for copper coating. I quite frequently pass the yard on the way to my office, or the way home, and therefore I kept an eye on the work, dropping in every couple of days to see how it was going, and the preparation seemed to be all in order. Everything was as per Coppercoat's recommendations. As the preparation work was nearing its end, I had to fly to Germany for a couple of weeks on business. I wasn't unduly concerned, because I'd seen the preparation work taking place every other day or so. When I returned, Impavidus had been Coppercoated, and again everything seemed okay. In the middle of March 2015 we took delivery. After a quick test sail, we were reasonably happy and returned the boat back to Port Solent. Over the winter, we'd amassed quite a collection of new bits and pieces, fittings, electronics and other stuff that we were going to fit to Impavidus. So we had quite a time in the spring fitting all these bits and bobs, as the weather in the UK isn't really that good for sailing around March. Fast forward to June. 2015. We lifted the boat and fitted a Brunton propeller and an Ambassador Marine rope cutter. Again we've had these on previous boats and they just outperform anything else that's available, but more about that later. During the lift to fit the Brunton propeller and the rope cutter we noticed something was wrong with the keel. You could actually see through the copper coat to the base coat or primer below. So we took some photographs, like this one, and sent them off to Clipper Marine. Now Clipper Marine said, don't worry, you enjoy the rest of your sailing season, and then we'll lift it out and have the work done under warranty. So that's what we duly did. We finished the sailing season, and into the winter, and in the spring, Impavidus was due to be lifted out to have our anodes done. So she was lifted out. When we lifted her out, it was quite clear that something had gone very wrong. There was rust spotting, tiny rust spots, and the copper coat had thinned even more. Clipper Marine insisted that Impavidus was brought round to their Swanwick boatyard on the Hamble, as it was easier for Osmotech to do the work there. We had to wait a while for a weather window, it being the spring again, and so Around the end of March, beginning of April, she was lifted out, and Osmotech began their work. At the end of the first day, I popped in to see how it was going. It had been raining most of that day, and when I arrived, there was a guy with an angle grinder attacking the keel. I immediately told him to stop work. I took lots of photographs and sent them direct to Coppercoat to ask them for their opinion. Having worked in an industry, where preparation of metal surfaces 
is paramount to the quality of the workmanship. I'm well aware of the correct way that cast iron should be prepped. Normally it would be grit blasted to SA standard 2.5 and then a zinc rich epoxy primer applied to the surface. Most important is that the keel actually has time to dry out. I pointed out that there are a number of areas where rust was actually under the primer and that this wasn't being blasted out or ground back. I really wasn't happy with the way the work was being done and I pointed out to them that this really should be done using media blasting otherwise in a few years time we'd have the same problem again. Cast iron has a high level of porosity and therefore any water that's got entrapped must be given time to dry out. This has to be done in a controlled environment where the humidity levels are low and also very quickly after the blasting's been done to prevent flash rusting. Now you might think I know quite a bit about this, well that's because I was in an industry where it was common practice. But not only that, we've actually done the job ourselves previously. Yep, we've done this job before. You have to leave the boat out for two or three weeks to dry out, unless it's very warm temperatures. The keel then has to be grip blasted, and this is best done dry. You have to protect the other boats around you as you work. You have to use a reputable contractor that knows what they're doing, has insurance, is allowed to work in the yard, and most of all knows what they're doing. Once it's done, the keel will look something like this. And once again, as we said before, you have to have a controlled environment. It needs to be warm, dry, and preferably sunny, or even indoors. The first layer of primer coat needs to be applied quickly to prevent flash rusting. You also need to ensure that the depth of the primers on each coat are the correct thickness using a wet film thickness gauge. Once the primers have reached sufficient thickness and are dried you can then apply a fairing compound which is compatible with the primer. This will smooth out the keel once it's been sanded. Multiple layers of top coat can then be applied and again once these have dried, you can then relaunch your boat. With the work carried out correctly, you can expect 8, 9, 10, 12 years without rusting, maybe even more. So knowing what we know, we were quite surprised when Coppercoat said the work's OK, it can carry on. They insisted that the work was covered by warranty and that Osmotec were approved applicators for Coppercoat. Once again, Due to business commitments, I had to fly out the country and I didn't get to see the application of the primer or the copper coat. However, Cindy did manage to get down the yard on a couple of occasions and take some photos. This one's particularly interesting when you zoom in. Keel is showing signs of rusting under the primer and it's covered in micro bubbles where the water is still behind the primer. It's unfortunate but we only started to take a real good look at these photos, which are a couple of years old now, when we had a problem. It's quite clear that the job wasn't done properly. But when I returned, well, it didn't look that bad. Finally, on the 7th of April 2017, Impavidus was relaunched with what we thought was going to be a long and enduring anti-fouling system as copper coat suggests that their product lasts 10 years or even longer. Well unfortunately for us that's not been the case. When we hauled out in Lakata in August 2020 the same problem was back again and this time it was much worse and we had to make arrangements to lift out in Tunisia this spring in order to do the work again and fund it ourselves. So we've been out of the water about an hour now. I've told the guys not to do anything with the keel other than just jet wash it off a bit. Now let this be a lesson to everyone else out there in Boaty land. Don't let any other person work on your boat. And if you do, supervise them every single minute. Follow 
the uh, data sheets and if they uh, if they deviate from the method the data sheets or the best working practice stop them and uh, get someone in because when we stopped them they said no 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 it's fine well clearly it ain't fine and it's gone in exactly the places that I pointed out to them weren't right now despite our best efforts in Tunisia we just weren't able to get anyone to do dry blasting to SA 2.5 and in the end we ended up abrading with a flapper wheel which is not ideal and not the way we wanted to do the job and while we've stripped back all of the copper coat and primer and got a good finish we know that it's just not the right way to do it and therefore we're probably going to be in the same position in two or three years time but hopefully by then we'll find someone in the Mediterranean that can do dry blasting and then we can do the job in the way that we want to do it lift out the new primer and of course the reapplication of copper coat has cost us around 500 euros so it's not that expensive but not what we should be doing and we know that now in fairness to copper coat the hull has performed really well and you can see once it's been abraded it's nice and clean and it stays that way for about 18 months even two years there's a couple of spots on the hull where we've had to repair the copper coat and to be honest they're minimal and one of them was our problem we actually damaged the copper coat so in fairness, on the hull, it's done what it said it would do. We wrote to Copper Coat, and here's what they said. It is disappointing to hear that the keel is rusting and forcing off the coating scheme. Please note though that this rusting and failure is not directly related to the Copper Coat, whose job is purely as an anti-foul and to deter marine growth. Looking at the pictures kindly provided, it appears that the priming scheme has failed as rust is coming through. Exactly why this should be the case is impossible for me to say. It could be related to the pre-existing state of the keel, or how it was prepared, or the choice of primer, or how it was applied, or the total thickness applied, the climatic conditions at the times of preparation and application, etc. Your contact at Osmotech would be better placed to answer this as they may well have records of the work completed. So basically, they said what we already knew, that it was the primer that had failed, and this was due to some error in the application. So we thought, we'll contact Alzmatech and see what they say. Unfortunately, it took three emails and two Facebook messages before they eventually replied some five or six weeks later. Here's what they said. The works to impavid us. Carried out by Osmotec were contracted by Clipper Marine. Osmotec honoured our two-year guarantee with remedial works carried out to the keel of Impavidus in accordance to the instructions by the Coppercoat representative. As the works were initially carried out in March 2015 and our guarantee now expired, Osmotec will not be in a position to cover the costs of the works. All the best. We know Coppercoat works. We know because we've had it on previous boats and we've never had a problem. But in these cases, we applied the copper coat and we stuck very strictly to their guidelines, their data sheets, and their very good videos on the subject. No problem. So we know copper coat works and we know it helps protect the hull of your boat. But when somebody else who's an approved applicator, approved by copper coat, does the works, basically, you've got two years. If it goes wrong, after that, your 10 year expected lifespan is up the swanny as they say. And the money that you invested up front to have your new boat treated, well, that's up the swanny too. And that two years starts from the date of the original application, even if that was wrong too. And presumably that applies not just to keels, but hulls as well. They get it wrong, you pay. If you're considering putting copper coat on your boat, then the first thing you should consider is who is going to do the work. Because even if you use one of copper coat's approved applicators, potentially your life expectancy for copper coat isn't 10 years, it's only 2 years. Because that's how long their applicators stand behind their workmanship. 
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. We make these videos for you so you can gain knowledge and experience through the experiences that we've had. Or consider becoming a patron or just buying us a beer. It all helps us to keep making these videos for you. Sail safe.